okay, this COVID thing has done something because I've been missing for a year, you know. <laughs> I live in Alice. <laughs> but here I am. <laughs> but well, I'm here right now. We're, we're, we're in uh, uh, Wakanda. Uh, but uh, for the last year, because as soon as I, like, I want to show you this. I like, I love this. I love this. I was in the States in last March, the beginning of March. COVID was just hitting. And I was there to do some for my visa. You know? And just now, so they had my visa there. The paperwork was in. It's going through it. Whatever. Then they shut down. They left. My passport was in the thing. Two months later or something like that, they said, well, you, you pick up your passport. You know what I mean? You go, no, we, no, they wouldn't know. Where should we mail your passport to? I happen to be in St. Louis at the time. So they mailed me the passport, right? The, the, the visa came through. You yeah. can see it was good until 2022, yeah. right? Yeah. But look what it says. I just want to show the camera right there. See that thing what it says right there? Look what it says. Read that. What does it say? Cancelled without prejudice. Now, when I first got it, I knew immediately what that meant. They said, yo, you're good. But we got a certain situation here, so you ain't going to come in with this. You ain't this. Da, 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 da. So I got to go through the whole process again. So, yeah. so now I'm here for the 90 days, even then, you know, you know to, uh, yeah. so I'm less than 90 days because I got it, whatever. Yeah. But then when I go back again, I'm going to put it through and, you know, maybe the COVID will have died down and, mm. and like that. In fact, I couldn't get an appointment because oh. I had to be back here. I have to come on a tourist visa, mm. come back in because when I tried to make an appointment, then the, 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 it was like May. So when I get back this time, I've yeah. been making appointments to how how long it's going to be or whatever it is, but yeah. things will shut down. But, but right now, the problem, not the problem, but the situation is my spending a year in the States, mm. I forgot. Mm. I used to joke that I would mm. sort of sneak into the States. Mm. Then within a few days, people say, hey, mm -hmm. Anthony's in town. Mm. <laughs> and all of a sudden, I have a bunch of stuff to do. And literally, I I, 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 would, I would sort of slide in. So again, when pe people people who know me know what I do, that's what happens, right? Well, now I see what I need to do because of my work uh, with Dumbaza. Uh, in fact, they they went on nicely without me because I have what I do is I set something up, and then I ha then I have abandonment issues. <laughs> what I do, I set something up, it's gone. If I can see it go. They gotta grow without me, cause if I'm there, what happens? It becomes me. It doesn't become whatever it's supposed to be. So she has been beneficial to the project I'm working on, because they they're growing their food now. Da da da. We want to get some meringue. So all I do is give them advice. And now I'm at the point where, if they ask me, they don't ask me. Well, I'm just hanging out. <laughs> I mean, I got some stuff to do, cause I got to do audio. I got to do three months. I'm gonna do audio drama with them. But uh, but anything else, it's like, oh. Well, brother Sloan, what do you what do you think? Mm -hmm. uh, come on, brother Ant, what do you what what should we do? I look, I said, I don't know. You know, my experience is you that can happen and that can happen. I don't know. What do you think? Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. so basically, it's back to education. They have it in themselves. They're of this land. They know what they again. Let's go back to Dimbaza. The, the, the factories are they trying somebody else. Somebody else is going to come from the back and try to do something with that. Well, don't they have some ideas? Shouldn't they go through them? Mm -hmm. So anyway, I got a lot of work to do in the States. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to basically try to be spending my time, especially if I get the permit right. I've been spending my time, not, I might have been spending like six months here, mm -hmm. yeah, six months there, or it might, might, be, well, it might be a time when I'm only three months here and nine yeah. months there, or vice versa. It just depends on what's happening. But I got, got some stuff to do. There's a play I really got to get at least read. Mm -hmm. It's an amazing piece. It's an amazing. I really got to get that done. It's, it's almost like now, now I'm going crazed over that. Then there's several projects that I could do with my internet thing, but I need to to do. No, I can only be in the states because of a certain costs, like just just phoning. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? I can't phone. I can't mm -hmm. use internet here. It's not, states, you know, I can mm -hmm. I can wheel and deal. With. And plus, there's the other project, a really big project I'm trying to work on. I have to do is it's called it's like a, it's, I call it a lineage project. This whole thing I got to interview people live. You know what I mean? 
So I got to be there. It's going to take some time to do that. But here's the big thing. What I've decided, not decided. I have most of my life spent. Man, Sheppy, I got to tell you. I usually just go by, like I say, I go by faith, not by sight, but it's almost like a necessity. Because it's almost like I have a, a, a call it a destiny, whatever that's happening. And if I veer off of that for my own, oh, I think I should do this. I just get knocked back, back on it. So it's best for me just to go with the flow, as they say. Because when I have my own ideas, things don't happen. I can then, then get personal a bit. I've always wondered, how can I, why can I not sustain a relationship? What is this about? That I remember early on, because I was writing so intensely, because I was doing a playwright and everything, I had girlfriends, and they would say, I can't compete with what you're doing. You know how women are. I'm going to put, baby, I'm paying. No, I just can't compete with what you're doing. You, I'm not going another, and I can't explain. Same thing with children, everything like that. It's not, and I, a lot of, even with jobs, do you realize what I got? I love books. I should be, I should work in the books. I love records. I should be working in, I couldn't get a job as a stock boy any place. He said, well, no, every time I tried, you're overqualified or whatever, 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 or something like that. It's almost like I was forced to do certain things. But everything I've done built into something else. The perfect example is what I did in Cape Town when we when they did Pan African Space Station, an amazing initiative, right? But if you look at the production end, which which I was involved with, I was perfectly suited to that because my background as musical director of a of a of a community radio station, as well as the engineering I had to do, that I was the perfect person to do that. And then that lasted for like five years, but then I had to go. I, was, I, was, I, was, I had to depart. I had to decouple. It's like that. But it was it, it ran its course. But everything it wasn't my doing. I just how everything happened is just unfolds, and I just go with it. I just go with it. I just go with it like that. But then I was trying to figure out why can I? I used to be like I couldn't live until I got to Cape Town. I wouldn't be in one place more than three years. Literally, I'm telling you, it's very weird. And then Cape Town looked, I was there like 10 years. Then even then I said, oh, ee, time to go. Gotta go, gotta go, gotta go. Then I had a choice. I was gonna stay, actually, I was gonna study Rosicrucians in Cape Town, because I just wanted to do some studying, but then Alice came along. Then I was oh, let me just study it for her. Like that, that's how I got out of there. But I finally, with this year, because I had to go, my best friend has a lot of the writing, a lot of stuff that happened to me, like, in the, in the 70s you realize I did a I, we did a uh, we did a radio program called Saturday Soul with JB at Princeton University it was a six and a half hour radio program Saturday Soul there had never been a program more than three hours before there had never been a program more than three hours after it's historic JB because he's a pack man he's got the tapes me at I'm serious. Me at 22 years, two years old, doing a poem, and and then that that thing grew. We, we had this crew. We did jingles. We did news. We did commentary. We did all kind of stuff that that people are now doing to today. We we did this in the in the mid 70s, in the early 70s, and he got it. This is a story we got to put up on the website. That kind of thing. I realized one more. I got to tell you this. When I went into the Air Force, we we. we, we I would have been conscripted anyway. Well, you know, it was a lottery. Back then, it's the Vietnam era. You know, you had to go in. It was just like 1960, well, 1969. Why was it in for 70, 74, right? There was no earthly reason why I should have been into the, into the, into the military. Because before then, I was trained from like 1967. Yeah. I was, I was in like a little revolutionary group. We were actually really reading like Che. <laughs> I'm seeing the Che up there, you know, Mao, you know, Nkrumah, you know, Fanon, all the people like that we were reading and we were important to the group. And, and the reason I knew what was happening in Vietnam because the two people that were training us, Bobby and Billy Shepard, they had been to Vietnam. And it was, it was, it was, in fact, the group was very interesting. It was three boys, three girls. I'm saying boys and girls because we were young. 
we were like 17, 18, 19, like that. Three boys and three girls. Equal. There was none of that, 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 that. Get coffee, none of that stuff. We were just serious studying, right? So I always thought about that. All the stuff that I've been, what is my mission? What is, what, it kept, it keeps on, not bothering me, but it, I keep on moving. But I said, there's got to be a reason why I can't sustain certain things, but other things that I, I just keep on flourishing. Then the last thing is what a friend of my fraternity brother, my, well, I'm going back to the military, but he, he said, you know, Anthony, in large groups, you're amazing. Like a group thing. But individual, one on one, you suck. What about they said? In fact, one time, one time, I'm so crazy. I'm so out of outline, outline. We were doing a play, doing Oh Ya. Yeah. I was directing. And we were, we were meeting with the producer, the writer, David. Only David knew me. The producer didn't know me. And nobody knew me. David wanted to hire me because he knows. Like I said, you can't hire me unless you know who I am. Right? And so, Tunde bless his soul, peace and blessing on his eternal soul too. He said, to, he said, when we was leaving, he said, he said, David, never let Anthony be in a room by himself. It's so true, because I will, people don't know what I'm talking about, right? Let me go back to this, like, 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 what I was, um, I was trying to get at uh, about the military. When I went into the military, when people now, because I'm a vet, you know, and they say, well, down in Virginia, it's a big vet town, you know, with a lot of military there. They say, thank you for your service. Thank you for your service. Now, I hear what they're saying, but they think that I had a rifle, a gun, or whatever. First of all, I was a medic. But what I did, I ne and I was Vietnam era, but I never went to Vietnam. I stayed in, in McGuire, in the dual dispensary. I got them, I got the Air Force to do sickle cell testing and lead poisoning testing in the community. Yeah. Or we even, or if, this, is, this is a picture of me with Mary Lindsay giving us an award. I got that. I started a group called Black Caucus. I co-founded a group called Black Caucus, where we again we did community work. We go, it was like amazing. So my work in the air in the Air Force was basically community work. It wasn't. I wasn't doing the bidding of the air of the military. Mm. You see, so all kind of weird things like that happen. So I have to look at why is that, and so I have to come up with this thing, and I have to use. I think I can end racism. I'll let you dwell on that. The only thing I'll tell you other than that, audio drama. That's it. I'll lay that bomb on you. And remember, this is me. So when I say stuff, most people don't know what I'm talking about. I will tell you, I will say something in maybe three weeks, three months, three years, 30 years. People say, that's what he was talking about. Now, oh, that's what's happening. Now I see it. I'm not saying I'm not being. I'm not prophetic. Okay, I live in a thing called. I live in a thing called the third infinity. I have to explain that. To some, well, let me try to explain it to you. You know what infinity is like, right? Mm. And then what what you do is like the the past is infinite. Mm. The future is infinite, mm. but that's not all. It's sort of three, three dimensional. If you look at the infinity, you now when I say the past. The, it's like a, an hourglass that goes out like that, right? So it goes out like that, so that's infinite. But if you use the infinity sign, it also goes like that. So as you go out like that, there's some inertia, something like that, that sort of folds back in. In fact, the faster you, the faster, the more past, the more something's fall back in. The future is, it hasn't complained, but it's going, but as soon as it goes, it still folds back in to your point. So each person has its third infinity. And so it falls back in. So I live in this space where I'm using I'm using the past, but I'm not conscious of it. And I'm I see a, I see a little bit into the future, and I exist in this spot that I have to I have to do the bidding, I have to do the bidding of my skills from the past. But my my vision of the future comes together in this audio drama. And because of, because I've been groomed the way I am, I'm basically I have the I had, I know how to. Um, you never can get rid of it, but I can address racism in such a way that it dissipates to a, to a point where that. Uh, and Africa is very important because Africa, as Mangalusa Robert Sabuke would say, is about humanity. If you ain't human, humane, you shouldn't be on this continent. There's a lot of other places you could be, not on this continent, and we can do that. So that's where I end.